Hello, everybody. Thank you for the introduction. I don't have much to say for myself uh, on top of that. So I'm here today to present you the new uh, Qt uh, module dedicated to home automation, Qt KNX. So KNX is the European standard for smart home. And uh, Qt KNX is here to open this world to developers. Um, we'll start by talking a little bit about KNX, what it is, and how Qt uh, KNX uh, fits uh, in, the, in the picture. And then uh, we'll get a little bit technical, we'll get into the KNX protocol, and uh, most importantly, how this uh, protocol is implemented within this module. So, what do we think about when we think about smart home? We think about self-opening light, uh, self-opening doors, um, maybe a smart blind that open when they need to open, and we would like to be able to control all that with our voice and also maybe when we are away from home. So, here we have some of the major players in the world of home automation. On this side here, we have the devices that are connected to some kind of voice control and then connected to the internet. And on the other side, you have the world of uh, devices covering uh, a very wide range of functionalities and which are used to build uh, smart networks. And what we would like to do is for you to uh, open the door of those uh, self-contained world to, to developers and allow them to build bridges because each of these world is, uh, is pretty much self-contained with its own protocol and its own interface to uh, interact with the devices. But imagine, for example, if uh, we were able to uh, connect to the, the KNX installation, as I said, they're the European leader in terms of, of smart home, and be able to you know, build our own user interface, web engine, have our own functionality, maybe some data mining, and maybe also being able to connect it to, to other, other type of device. And uh, Qt KNX is here to help you do that, to help you connect to, to those kind of, uh, of installation. So what is KNX? Well, as I said already, KNX is the European leader in terms of smart home protocol, and it is threefold. It is devices, it is a network protocol, and it is an application. So the KNX... Uh, uh, association set the standard for the protocol. The manufacturer, they build the device which follow this protocol and then those devices are used to build smart networks and um, to communicate between each other and to communicate with the outside world, the devices are using the KNX protocol. And ETS is the KNX application used to configure those kind of network and then to control those kind of installation. So, this is a very simplified view of the KNX world. So here we have the network with the NetIP server, the KNX devices linked to it. Uh, you have the ETS application, so we are using the ETS application to configure the network. And um, after this uh, configuration step, step, there is a project file that is created. And then this project file can be kind of backfed to the ETS uh, software. And then thanks to this software, we can control the installation. And any contact with the KNX network is done by exchanging KNX frames. So, where does Qt fit in this picture? Well, the idea is to open this uh, pretty close world, and uh, that's what Qt KNX uh, does. If you uh, give to KNX the information that are enclosed, for example, in the project file, so the information about your network, then with Qt KNX, you can start sending KNX frame and communicate with your KNX installation. And then you can use the rest of Qt to build your application, your UI, your web client. You can do some kind of high level setup on an already installed in installation. And of course, why not link your application to other protocol, voice control device, and whatever you want. 
So, basically, the idea is that Qt KNX is uh, enclosing the KNX protocol so that people who are not expert in KNX protocol can start communicating with KNX network. So, you don't need to be an expert, but it's always good to have an idea of what is this protocol about in order to even to use the, the Qt KNX module, right? So, we're going to go through uh, some very general and basic aspect of this uh, KNX protocol, and we're going to see how it is implemented within this module. So, what do we have here? Here we have, sorry, here we have the, the KNX uh, network, so the, the different devices. They are linked to the KNX NetIP server, and here is the client. So, typically the kind of role that would be uh, taken by the, by the Qt KNX, right? We, we can be a client. So, the first thing we need to do is to discover the KNX server. Then, once the server has been discovered, we're going to need to establish an exchange with the control endpoint. And then we're going to ask the control endpoint to prepare us a data connection, right? This data connection can be of two types. It can be a tunnel or it can be for management. So, then it, it is within this data connection that we're going to be able to send frame, let's call them tunnel frame, and it's those frame that are actually going to make it to the KNX network. So, how do we do that concretely? To discover a KNX uh, installation. We declare uh, a discoverer, then we set the local, our local address so that um, the server knows to whom he has to respond. Then we start the, the agent, the discovery agent. And then once it is done, we can recover from the agent the server that have been discovered. Then you can print the information you, you received. And here, for example, in this example, uh, we just discovered one server. And uh, we have some uh, information about the server, its individual address, the address of the control endpoint. You remember that we're then going to have to talk to the control endpoint to initiate a data connection. And then here we have the list of services that are supported by this device. So the core services is actually the control endpoint, the fact that the server has a control endpoint. Then we have the device management and the tunnel, so the two type of uh, data connection that I mentioned before. Then, here we see how to establish this data connection I've been talking about. So, we get the information about the server from the, the, the agent, you know, so the agent discovered the server, it has the list of server, we retrieve this list of server, let's say we take the first one because there was only one in our case, we get the server IP address, the server port, then we declare a tunnel connection, so this is this data connection. Then uh, within this connection, we're going to set the local address, and then we're going to connect to host, and the host being this server that we chose before. Then we can do whatever we need to do. We can send the frame that will actually reach the devices and do stuff in our network. And uh, once we are done, we will just have to disconnect from, uh, from host. So, the KNX protocol is based on the, on the LC modeling and it has four main layers. The application layer, transport layer, the network layer, and the data link layer. And within each of these layers, there are some concepts. So, let's review them briefly. So, in the application layer, we find the concept of data point and the concept of services. So, the data point, they are an interface to a functionality. And within a device, the data point will be implemented by using objects. So, they will be interface of group object, depending on the, the type of data point it is. And then the services, there are two main type of services. They are the exchange and data process one, and they are, they are, there is the one for configuration and maintenance. So, here I emphasize on the group communication services. 
which is one of the mainstream one, the one that is the most easy to use in order to order the network and a given device to do something for us. Um, then the transport layer uh, encapsulates the concept of connection. So to access some services, sometimes we will need uh, uh, to be connection oriented. So it's just one more level of, of logic that has to be implemented. Then the network layer um, encapsulates the notion of addressing. So sometimes you address the device by its individual address, sometimes by its group, group address, and sometimes just by broadcast. And then the data link layer encapsulates everything else. So each of those layers is found within a device. So within a device, we found the object, which are the implementation of the data points, so the implementation of the functionality, so what a device can do. And then you have uh, those tables, so a table that lists the object, then a table that lists the addresses to which the device will respond, and then you have what is called an association table, which tells you when you address this address, then you will target this object, so by extension, this functionality. So basically, one address is one functionality. Of course, the packaging, so the, this package that will be sent through the server to the network, so to the device, is also organized in the same way, so we, we can find again those, those layers. Um, three main things we're going to need to know about in order to build those packages. We're going to need to know the destination address, so where are we going to send a, a message. We're going to need to know what type of service we're trying to trigger, and we're going to need to send data basically telling the device what to do. Right? So, for example, if you want to turn on a lamp, it's going to be a switch, and then the data is going to be one bit on or off. Right? Simple example. So, um, in our module, we're going to have this frame. So, let's call it the tunnel frame. Right? We're going to need to set the address of the tunnel frame. Then we're going to need to set the NPDU, so the network part of the frame. And the module uh, offers builder so that to help you build your NPDU. And then those builder, they are different depending on the service type you want to use. And they take as an argument the data that you need to put in your frame, right? So let's try to look at things from a slightly different perspective. Let's say you want to turn on a lamp, right? So these are the notion we need to be familiar with. So the notion of data point. As I said before, the data point is the interface to a functionality. It's another way of saying this is a function, this does something. Um, it can be of different type. It can be a switch, it can be a timer, you, you name it. Just a device that can do something, then it will have a data point of a given type. And it has a data format. As I mentioned already, for a switch, it's going to be one bit. Uh, if it's a date, for example, for a clock, then it's going to be much more complicated because you're going to have the year, the month, etc. Right? Um, then you have the notion of group object. So this is like the model. This is the recipe, right? And the group object is the cake, right? So if you have two, two, two devices, each of them linked to a lamp, and each of them have, have a switch then they're going to have the same kind of data point, but they're going to be two group objects, so two implementation of this data point, of this functionality. And uh, since they are group object, you have to access them via group application services. And the third notion we need to be familiar with is the notion of group address. Group addresses are uh, what you need to address group object, basically, the group object and the group addresses, they are going to be linked together via this association table we saw before. So uh, this is supposed to summarize this idea. So let's say we have three group address. 
so a group object and a group address, they are both linked to a certain type, right? Because let's say you send a message to a given group address, then uh, this address needs to be of a given type because it's going to target maybe multiple objects, and so they need to, to be able to, to receive the, this, kind of, uh, this kind of message. So here, for example, we have the group address number one, which description is switch both lamp. And within this group address, so this group address is associated to two group objects, group object number one here and group object number three over there. They are both switch. And if you send a switch on frame to this uh, group address, then you will turn on both lamp, right? I'm actually, I'm, I'm already telling you this story here. So how to actually access the functionality. So accessing a functionality via the group address is the most direct way of accessing a functionality. In order to do that, you will need a tunnel connection. So you remember, we discover the server, we start talking to him, then we establish a data connection, a tunnel connection in this case, we're going to need. So we have a tunnel connection. Then we need to know what is the group address we're interested in, right? We will have to look at the description because we want to switch both lamp, right? So we, we're going to need to fetch this information and we're going to fetch it, for example, in the project file. That's one way of, of knowing which group address we need to address. Then we need to know the service uh, we, we need. So since we are going via group addressing, then we need a group value right. This is the name of the service we need. And then we're going to need the, the proper data byte to put in, a, in our frame. And uh, basically, our module is helping you to do that, right? So with our module, you're going to have uh, the, the, the data byte you need, and you're going to send them to the group address which is associated to those two objects, and bam, both your light will turn on. So concretely, how do we do that? So you remember, we need to have a tunnel connection, right? So we have a tunnel connection. Uh, then we're going to need a tunnel frame. So we declare a tunnel frame, right? And uh, we'll check if it's valid, and then we will send the tunnel frame, and uh, we will do things, right, by sending our frame. So the question is, how do we build our frame so that it does something meaningful and uh, even more interesting, something we want? So we're building this tunnel frame, which means we're building this, uh, this green thing we've seen before. And uh, we're going to need three things, right? We're going to need to know the address, the service, and the data point. So we know it's going to be a group address. We know it's going to be a group value right for the service. And, uh, well, the data point, the bytes, we'll see. So first, uh, let's declare a QKNX address. We know it's a group address, so we give it the proper type. And then, where do we find this information about the actual address? Well, we find it in the KNX project file, for example, where there is the description, and it's like, all light switch, right? So we have the description, and then we can pick the address that is of interest for us. Then we take this frame, and for this frame, we set the destination address, right? With the address we just built. So this is done. Now uh, we're going to need to build the, the bytes, right? So we also know from the KNX uh, project file that this uh, address is linked to a data point of type 1-1. So data point type 1-1 is a switch. So you ask for a switch, you ask for the on state, and then you ask for the bytes, right? So now we have the data byte. And now we need to build this NPDU part, right? So we declare it, and then we use the factory with the proper service type we want, right? Create group value, right? And then as an argument, it's just, it just takes the data we, we created, right? And then that's it. Our NPDU, so the orange part of the frame, is ready. We just set this part with the initial tunnel frame, and then our frame is basically ready to be sent 
to the KNX network and it will reach the right device and a light will turn on. So that brings me to my conclusion. Um, so thanks to the, the Qt KNX module, the developer now have an easy access to the, the KNX world. They don't need to be expert in the protocol. We're going to take them by the end. We're going to make their life much easier. And uh, the little they will need to know, well, it will be well documented. What can it do right now? Uh, it can discover the server. It can connect to the server via tunnel and management uh, connection. It can interact with the, 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 the KNX network. The basic read and write function are ready and the more advanced function which we will allow to do uh, management of the device, not programming, but management of the device, they will come, they will come soon. That's it. Thank you. That was really deep, deep dive. Thanks for that. Okay. <laughs> I hope, uh, I'm pretty sure there are people around who appreciate that. Um, are there any questions towards Lucy? So who raises his hands? His hand, at least one. I mean, you've got your example code somewhere. I'm sorry? Yes, it is from some example uh, on the, the module. It will be made public quite soon. And this is basically the, the kind of thing we, we are using to operate a, a demo upstairs. We have a demo, and uh, that's how we turn on light. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, yes, um, the thing is, it can, it can never be completely high level because it really depends on your, on your network. So there will always need to be a certain understanding on the developer part because he, he will have to tailor his own solution for his own network. But yes, this is really low level because we are really just basically building the foundation, but for more complex functionalities, then there will be like a higher level of logic, and then yes, we will, be, we will build more complex API so that, you know, your life is made as easy as possible. 